Well, you have to keep listening as you go through, and you don't want to oversell. If they've offered, if they said, yes, this sounds interesting, then you look to close because you don't want to get off on another tangent. If they've really expressed an interest, close that aspect. Uh, and depends on really, of course, what you're doing, but if they've offered to um, provide support or do this, then then start flushing out the details. Go as far as you possibly can at that time. But just based on that thing they agreed to do, right? Not try to go off onto more. Is that what you're saying? Well, it sort of depends on, on how they phrased it. Um, but I would at least close that aspect and then maybe do another open probe to see if if they did that, then, you know, would they be interested in being on the board or, you know, you have your laundry list of things that you know about your organization. So if you have that handy and they've offered to do this, I'd, I'd accept that and then, you know, make them aware of other things beyond that, but I would at least get the commitment for what they had said they were interested in. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, okay. And um, is there something that you do not recommend that we do? Don't be negative. Oh. Don't go talking about your personal history. People aren't really interested in you. They really want to talk about themselves. So just give them enough about yourself to get them interested and through, you know, your credentials. But really spend your time. I found when I've gone off and started rambling about my own history, it's just wasted time. It doesn't get accomplished what you want, and it's just a waste. You really need to stay focused on them and, and then be, be sensitive to people's times. You know, they're busy, you're busy, and if you found that there's a lot more there, make another appointment rather than if you know that you had your 20 minutes, then be courteous and and, and, and um, thank them for their time. Mm, well, that's really good advice. What, like, I, I know you had so much experience selling uh, products, or advertising, but like, and I know you also do so much volunteer work. How, I mean, what do you think? How, I'm just asking Maggie because so many people just can't do what you do. What, what, what do you see with volunteer organizations? What would you recommend from your own Number experience? one thing to keeping a volunteer group happy is to keep praising them. Whatever the smallest thing they do, if you're sending out group emails, recognize all the various things that individuals have done and don't criticize anyone else who hasn't done anything. You just stay positive and help them feel that there's momentum going on and give them clear outline of what the next expectations are. Communication is key. People love to be kept in the loop. They love to feel that the team is really accomplishing things. Um, people join these groups to connect, to have friends. So the more opportunity you get to give them a chance to accomplish something, maybe with your organization, but at the same time to mingle with each other and to have fun, the more successful you're going to be. Ooh, that's good. And uh, I, that sounds like exactly the way to deal with donors, too. Right. Make them feel a part of the team. And of course, make them feel important. But help them connect. Help them introduce them to other people that you know they might be interested in. Help them feel comfortable if they're coming into a group meeting for the first time and make a point of either assigning someone to them or making sure you introduce them so that they are comfortable. The first time into any group can be a little strange. I love name tags. Um, if you have a large group, sometimes that's a ha- helpful way for everyone. 
I, that reminded me, I, I was asked by a woman that I met to be on a committee. I showed up at the meeting. The chairman of the, there were about 10 people in the room. They all seemed to know each other. He didn't introduce anyone, including me, even though it was my very first time there. And I, I remember, I never went again. I mean, that was it. Right. I just thought, right. And I think it's important too when you ask people to be on your their, on your board. I think you ought to be upfront in a little bit of, as to what the expectations are. You know, people are flattered that they're being asked, but I think the more you can sort of tell them upfront, so that they are really buying into that, rather than showing up for the first meeting and then finding out that, well, this is really a capital fundraising project. <laughs> um, it. You know, people expect to do fundraising as part of these boards, but but a lot of them want to do other aspects. So I, I think the more you can make it a broader than just a fundraising role, play, role, I think you'll end up with happier board members. I loved what you said, too, about um, a big mistake is assuming too low, because I've had that where I want to do a lot more and there's no opening for that. Mm-hmm. Or I couldn't give, I had expertise in areas that there was no way for me to say, this is what I, I could also do this for you. You know, because right. they were so focused on do that, the thing they had on right. their Right, they have paper. this little assignment, and yes. so they're just thinking of that, that they got a live body that's going to fill that niche. Yeah. So how if let's say an organization is trying to um, sell memberships or try to get more people to join and be involved, what, what do you recommend to them? Well, I like newsletters. I think that's a great way. It's work, but I think it gives people connection. They can see the different projects that you've got involved with. Mm. I think bringing someone new in to a project and, you know, Help, get them involved with one you know is going to be fairly successful and has a good leader. And, and then just let that leader pull those resources out. Everyone ha- can do multitasking, and you just really need to find what those strengths are. Um, and people are usually more than happy. That's why they've come to your organization. You've got to assume that, that they really are open to giving their time. And then use their time wisely. Don't just have them stuff envelopes. Really let them do some creative things and things that are really using their mental resources and contacts, and it can be a win-win for the organization. You know, I've seen things this happen several times that I think is so good. Let's say you do need to stuff, stuff envelopes, which people don't do that much anymore, but let's say you do need something like that done. And you have a program or the meeting or whatever, and then afterwards you say, if anyone's willing, we have to do this, could you stay afterwards? And then you make it fun. Like they're, they're, they're already there. You get people out on the porch or something in little clumps of four or five people doing this all together. Right. And, you know, a lot of people go, but a lot of people who, who have never done that kind of thing before stay because right. they were there anyway. And it's fun. Right. You know, you make it fun. You have music going and you serve popcorn or something. And I've just, I've seen people make connections with an organization that way and they would never have just come to do that alone. Right, right. And, or just having food. I mean, that just always mm-hmm. seems to make people more <laughs> happy to stay around. I, I saw this thing one time. A librarian was having a meeting and she had this thing all set up with all this food. And I said, wow, what are you doing? She said, oh, I'm having a meeting. She said, if you need them, feed them. (laughs) (laughs) I liked that. (laughs) Right, right. But the other thing I found, because as a leader, sometimes then you get stuck doing all that stuff, is to then, you know, ask for the volunteer for the next meeting coming up. Could you bring an hors d'oeuvre? And people usually are very happy to do it. But somehow, just you sort of have to help them along to make that decision, and um, then that, then it's all shared. Then you don't become burnt out because you're doing it all. 
Mm-hmm. And also people feel more part of it then. A lot of people are really good bakers and like doing that. Mm-hmm. So it can be very rewarding and it shows off their talents to the other group, uh, the rest of the group. Um, and it's social and people like to do social things. Yeah, I like the point you made too is that they like to be asked to make the hors d'oeuvre or bring the cookies or something, but they don't want to be the one who has to organize it. Right. So if you just have, I have actually a story in Toledo to serve about a woman who was in charge of this whole thing, and she couldn't do that. She couldn't ask other people, and so she ended up, like, baking hundreds of cookies, and she was so burned out. And then the second woman came in, and she made these, and she just passed them around, and said, you know, like with the dates of the event that she needed them made for, and people just signed up. And then she spent her time just going around and meeting everyone and welcoming them and making sure they know there is a chance to participate if they want to. Right. And, it, and it was it was like and night it and day the team. When then, even, then more people feel committed to the organization because they've stepped up and done done something. Exactly. Yeah, they say if you want to love something, serve it. So if you serve an organization, you start loving it. You know, it's mm-hmm. just, it's a natural feeling, you know, to be of service in that way. Yeah. And also, I think to keep your meetings positive and, you know, and I think that has to come from the leadership. You know, if it starts mm-hmm. falling down into negative this and negative that, you got to change the subject and change the tone. Mm-hmm. So true. So absolutely true. I heard there was this research at Stanford where they asked, um, let's see, how did it go? Like, they found that when people said, you know, oh, this is hard or this can't be done, if the leader said, well, what if you, what if it could? What that actually does is it engages the brain, it, the cognitive part of the brain that's a problem solving part of the brain. And when you say, oh, it can't be done or it's too hard, you're shutting down the, that part of the brain. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Well, and I think it's really fun what a group can accomplish. You have all those different resources of people, and they bring all their background. And so until you get started in a dialogue or a project, you don't really know what's going to bubble up. Mm. And that's what's exciting. That's why people like doing things together as a group. Because as a group, it can be stronger if you get everyone's energy marshalling in a positive way. Mm. I have a, a, a YouTube video about, um, it's also in my W do, Your Donation System about this, where it was like that, exactly. I had so much going on and this man came and then... Fortunately, I listened to him, and it turned out he had all of these connections. And it ended up raising us like about $200,000. But I didn't know that before. Before, mm-hmm. And I was so ready to just give him, you know, <laughs> please go lick stamps or something. <laughs> you know, interesting. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Hey, Maggie, well, you when, when, when you were... Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, you also don't know in your group there who, what friends they have and that they might know. So it's really a big triangle that can pull in a lot of resources beyond just your immediate group that's meeting there. Well, Chris, what was your question? Oh, no, um, I just had a question. Um, like when you first started, um, you know, learning uh, marketing and sales and stuff like that, was there some – you know, single person or, or a group or somebody who inspired you or, or who you learned from and you wanted to emulate, you know. Yes. So I had a it? fabulous sales manager in New Canaan, Connecticut, and he was a maverick, and he was just a wonderful guy. And I'll never forget because I was like, I was promoted to the first assistant sales manager um, from Philadelphia to the Connecticut, which was a huge office. And I was really nervous about taking that position. And he turned to me and he said, Maggie, just put a little magic in what you do. And I just <laughs> love that. That vision uh-huh. just really sort of elevates all your concerns. And um, he was just a really creative boss and fun to to work for. And, 
he always had a different approach that made you think differently about things. Right. And I could see that in nonprofits too. A lot of times, the person who has done the most work takes that role, but sometimes they're not the person to inspire and motivate others. And if you can let someone who is a little a people person or a, a person who can put magic into mundane things, let that person shine for a while. They will attract others mm-hmm. to your cause. So and it just adds energy. Yeah, it's true. So, Maggie, um, we're coming to a close. Is there anything else that you want to say or you feel would be helpful to nonprofits? I know you've been involved with so many of them. Well, I think they all do a lot of wonderful things for our country and for the world. And so I think the more the organizations can run smoothly and you successfully reach out and get to the right people, then that organization is just going to grow. So I think there's a lot of opportunity, and there's never just one way to do anything. So if you're open and just listen, I think that a lot of these things will just come naturally. Mm, That's great. Oh, that's such good advice. So, Maggie Jarbo, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Maggie. To everyone listening, we wish you really magic. In well, put, go out there and put a little magic in it. <laughs> Good night. We wish you really magic. In well, put, go out there and put a little magic in it. <laughs> Good night. We wish you really magic. In well, put, go out there and put a little magic in it. <laughs> Good night. We wish you really magic in well, put, go out there and put a little magic in it 